Okay, this session is gonna talk about viral content styles. This is where we get into some really exciting things because we're gonna teach you what is a viral post and what kind of content are we gonna be creating. And there's a very specific way we're gonna create this content. <clears throat> now you have a website, you have a blog, you have um, an awesome viral site. And you're not, the mistake people make is they think that they're going to be like a regular news site where they're just giving the facts. The problem is facts don't sell people. Stories sell. Facts tell, stories sell. So what we're doing is we're creating in this viral content creation is we are going to get people so curious and so interested but we're also going to give them lots of value so that they love us and you build a big fan base and that's why this whole model works it's called the viral site system for a reason because of this one thing people share you want people to share and fall in love with your content that really is the key to this model because you're going to be driving traffic um, lots of different ways and some of it's going to be paid traffic so if you pay for a little traffic what you want to do is have 10 20 people share that from that one cost of, of your paid traffic and that's what's awesome about this model because you know you can send a click for as much as like you know little as like a penny and when something becomes viral it gets shared a lot that cost can go down to like tenths of a penny very fraction minuscule uh, minuscule amounts of a penny and uh, a, a lot of people are going to click on your ads on your site you're going to make some uh, great returns now you never know what's going to go viral and so that's why i'm going to spend a little time with you here teach, showing you different types of viral posts talk about some of the pitfalls that you need to be aware of and uh, again this will kind of like evolve over time that's the whole reason why we have this mastermind this whole group. So let's talk about the anatomy of a viral content. This I got this from Neil Patel, really smart guy. Um, clearly, not everything can be viral content. So there's really two things that it relies on. Number one is the content itself is worthy of being shared. We're going to talk about that. Number two, the content is shared widely enough to reap the benefits of networks they are shared on. So it needs to be shared widely, meaning it needs to be easy for people to share and they've got to want a reason. And then when something goes really, really viral, it gets shared across multiple networks, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, you know, Instagram. So let's talk about that first topic is what is worthy content? So you're going to get lots of opinions and lots of debates on this, but at the end of the day, um, worthy content usually evokes an emotion love happiness smile amazement love anger shock curiosity now that doesn't mean it's worthy though okay this is just a part of it there's a lot of garbage content out there that evokes these emotions but they're not necessarily worthy content and the other thing is worthy to who well, and I'm going to talk about that because you can make some money with some pretty sloppy content, but is it going to build you a long-term business? The question you need to ask yourself is the content you're creating, is it evergreen? Is it going to be here You know, five years later when someone comes across that article, are they still going to enjoy that content and read that and consume that and click on your ads? And so it's worthy if it's evergreen. So in my opinion, if it's worthy, it strikes one of these emotions that causes someone to take action and it's evergreen so that um, people will enjoy that content for years to come. For example, though, if you're like, here's a, here's something that's not evergreen. If you're a political site and you're reporting news on elections, you know, right now we have Trump versus Hillary. Well, you know, no one's going to care five years from now about that. So those articles are going to get buried and that content will get buried. But if you have um, content that's evergreen that doesn't change, then those articles will pay you for years and years and years to come. This is probably the biggest thing what I would consider is worthy content. Is it providing value to your fan base or to the people that read it? Like when they read that, did they go, oh, I like that. I'm going to actually like this Facebook page because I like what I just read. I'm actually going to come back. 
I'm going to bookmark it. And you know if you're providing values if you start getting a lot of comments, especially comments on your website. Um, and then here's the other thing is if in this is might not be if it's worthy content this is more for like you as a business perspective it uh, is it content that will have a high paying ad on the page so we talked about this earlier uh, in one of the other modules about the you know top keywords that people pay on adwords well it, one of the things of your niche is um, having high paying topics that you um, talk about and so is it you know Google's going to reward you for having really good content on your site, and they're going to put some really good looking ads. They're going to match your content, and so is your content you're talking about. Is it worthy enough to you to write about? Because uh, you know you're going to have all these components on it, but at the end of the day, is it going to have ads that's going to pay for your cost and make you a profit? So that's what I consider worthy content. So let's go into the first one. It's probably one of the largest ones. Is that's video editorials or just videos. So here's an example. Um, I'm looking at, at uh, aboutallthings.com. Um, it's a video. His father has Alzheimer's, but when they sing together, he gets him back for a moment. So this is a video editorial. This is a, a video that someone posted out there on YouTube or on Facebook or any other place. And I wrote an editorial about it. So I'm talking about this video as if I'm this, you know, I'm a blogger because I am. I'm telling about this video, how it provokes the emotion and why people need to go watch this and, and share it. And you do it in a very specific way. Let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and bring it up here. Um, so this is what the uh, what the article looks like. And by the way, I'm going to teach everyone a little trick right here with your current templates that you're using. I'm on a, de a desktop right now. And you'll notice that this is what the article looks like when you're looking at, at it on desktop. Um, I'm going to hit, do a little trick when I'm in Google Chrome, I'm going to hit F12. Now watch this, when you hit F12, you can control, right, you can toggle this device right here for mobile and you can see what it looks like on a mobile phone. See the bottom line, most people are going to be looking at your content on mobile devices. So you need to be very aware of what your content looks like. But notice something different here. The picture, the thumbnail is at the top of the page where it wasn't on desktop. I'm going to load this up in a desktop environment. We're getting a little nerdy techie here, but I want you to understand how, how this works and why it works. And It's our templates we've tested. We know that they get um, a uh, bit more people engaged with our ads when we do that. So notice here, there, see, it looks totally different. You have to, our, our sites are totally designed differently for um, desktop than they are mobile and it's done, it's by design. Okay, so this is a blog article about this video, okay? And it's about an editorial piece about a really cool video that was found and you got to watch it at and we even have uh, clicking to the next page to actually see the video itself okay so there it is there's the video and you can watch this video and it's a really Absolutely. cool video by his uh, guy that his dad has all my high time Alzheimer's and when he sings with him in the car he kind of gets his dad back get the attraction. and kind uh, of comes you know back he sees the, these moments with his so, okay, so let's kind of go back though and break this down and tell you why this works. Now, first of all, video is hot. It's, it's one of the reasons that um, this whole viral model works. Video keeps people engaged, it keeps them on your site, and it's some of the most easiest things for people to, to share. Um, but as you'll notice, if you go look through this content here, you'll notice that I'm giving people enough content to keep them interested, but I don't tell them all the secrets about it. They're, they get so intrigued, they've got to go to the next page or scroll down below and stay on the page and actually watch it. Um, that is the key to videos. You can't just share a video and say, hey, this is a cool video. You have to write some editorial content, three to 500 words of what, uh, why they need to watch this video, how you discovered it, how you found it, really cool things about it. But you don't tell them everything. You tell them enough 
to keep them interested, but you don't tell them everything. So these are probably some of the most po uh, popular posts. And if you go look around at lots of different sites, you'll see that uh, many are video posts. And they're actually probably some of the easiest posts to make as well. For example, let's go over to uh, Little Things. They've got a really cool article about the uh, a grandma with the longest fingernails in the world loses them in a car accident. So here is this content here. And it's actually from Salt Lake City, Utah. It's interesting. Um, uh, oh, I actually met this woman one time before. I just forgot about that when I was a kid. I met her. She has the long, had the longest fingernails in the world. Um, so she talks about how she lost these fingernails and she talks about the, the video and it intrigues you so much that you want to sit here and watch this video. And you know, you watch this whole video, it's pretty long. It's something that the record you know, holder. Engaging. And what's all around it? Well, you got all these share buttons. And, and also notice you got ads around here as well. And so it keeps people engaged. Um, and you'll know when you'll have something really good when a lot of people start sharing it. So there's a perfect example of a video editorial. Um, you'll see it's kind of an art form you get going. Here's the next type of post. So basically it's going to be photos. You're going to be having photos with, um, with content about the photos. So you can also do just a plain text, you know, content, but we generally find that photos are what sells an article. Have photos and then you're talking about that. So go back to the little things again. They've got a great little article about um, little girls' colorful crayon drawings are transformed into adorable dresses. So this article is, well, exactly what it says it is. It's an editorial about these cool little things or these girls make these little things on paper and then they make them into dresses. And then there's actual photos of how they do it and, and um, pictures of them and talking about it. You're just basically blogging about every picture and talking about it and giving your editorial con con comments about it. And then inner, you know, you'll see just ads throughout it. And so um, I just picked this one off random. I don't know if this one's very viral or not, but it's just an example of um, photos. So actually some of the most viral posts that I've ever had have been um, photos. And especially if you take those photos and have those photos across multiple pages. And we're going to talk about that here in just a moment and why, why we do that. So photos with editorial comments is probably the neck and neck up there with video posts. The next one example is like DIY or recipes. Um, these types of posts that show you how to do things is a very, very popular post. Um, let's see if I can pull up this, this article here. I didn't load it up on my screen. Let's go back over to uh, let's go back over to little things here, and I'll show you how you can find a lot of these things. Let's see if it was still on the on the front page here. Let's see where was that post? They do some kind of cool things with their site where it um, where things load up in different spots. Well, let's just do this one. Um, this one might be a video one actually. She stuffs three wooden dowels into concrete to create an adorable cheap stool. Yeah, that's a that's a video post. It's a video DIY, and I'm gonna talk about that one here. And this is probably some of the best for you guys as well, because unless you're gonna create your own DIY stuff and make your own videos, you're gonna have to post about other people's. And videos are really good. Let me see if I can find a, a good video. Uh, hang an old tennis ball from your garage ceiling to reduce danger when parking. Let's see, this one might be pictures. Yeah, this one's pictures. This is a perfect example. So another DIY, just in essence, it's the same thing as just photos and blogging about it, kind of giving step-by-step -step instructions. And you'll be amazed at how many people will, will share these. So there you go. How to hang a tennis ball. <laughs> kind of cool. All right. Um, let's see, recipes. Recipes are a good one. Now this one has gotten really popular over the last year or so. Let's bring this one up here. Um, you'll notice that people will, you know, special barbecue sauce makes for the most delicious chicken sliders ever. And so this 
has a picture of it, has a recipe of it, but this is this is kind of the key what's happening. Watch this video. It's the sped up recipe video. See that there? makes these videos. Not that's you make these videos. I mean you definitely could but there are people out there on YouTube that have them as well so these have become very very uh, popular um, on little things but that just kind of gives you an example of like how to uh, types of articles all right now we're gonna go into what are called slideshows okay this one has kind of been going about last about 18 months or so and um, there's a specific reason why uh, these slideshow type articles um, have have come about, and I'll explain that here. Um, so here's a site here. I just pulled this one up, frankiesfacts.com. I don't know anything about this site. But 26 secrets that Disney won't tell you. So he's got these articles here and about things that invoke the curiosity. Wow, here's something with Donald Duck wearing Nazi signs, you know, what the heck is all about. It's probably really controversial. And then this is a slideshow. So I've got to go through 26 pages now to get to this content. Um, anyway, so just kind of like controversial type things. I mean, a lot of people have seen these all over the place. So there we go. You know, he's got his whole thing. And, and you'll be surprised that statistically wise, people will click through these and you can see a whole bunch of them like here's another one these are ads here and by the way you'll be making money on putting ads on your site like this too but uh mind-blowing details about bewitched reveal you know so i'm going to talk about these kind of articles here in a little bit but this gets your curiosity you want to go from next page to next page to next page to next page um yeah that's funny so uh you know, people spend a lot of time on these and clicking next page, next page. These are called slideshow articles. And the reason why these came about is because for a while people were making people click to the next page, but they weren't telling them really why. And it was really ticking a lot of people off. So someone came up with the idea of, hey, let's let's call it a slideshow. And we'll actually hit, and many times you go to pages and they'll say, start slideshow. And it's just part of communicating with the the end users so that they understand hey man there's gonna be like 40 slides I gotta click through the, the that is called a slideshow article what's the future of slideshows I think slideshows are great and they'll be around as long as you provide value and give people what they're looking for the problem we have right now is we have a lot of people creating slideshows and they're just rehashing slideshows and they're using other people's slideshows and they're just garbage they're actually not getting what they they see so you've seen those slideshows that are like you know hey the 10 top celebrities that gain 200 pounds number seven will shock you and you go through there and you can never find number seven or it's so annoying you click through so many different pages and do like 50,000 clicks and and you never get to what you want to see so I think those are I mean there's already those are kind of being penalized by all kinds of people I think people that create sites that are just like that are gonna find that they're gonna have a short-lived site so yes slideshows are great you just have to make sure you give people what they want at the end and keep them happy um, so let's talk about the multiple pages now you've noticed that in a lot of these articles we have multiple pages. Not always, but a lot of times we do. Well, why do we have multiple pages? Simply for one reason. It keeps people on your website. Um, so we're in a business where we want to keep people on our website as much as possible. We don't want to trick them. We want to keep them on there. And there's something called the bounce rate. So here's just a little snapshot from one of my articles. So when you have a single post article, the behavior of people is to get on there and then two three seconds later they're gone they bounce they bounce off your site so for example if you look at your stats and your bounce rate site like 95% that means like people are hitting your site and they're just leaving all right so you want to have your pages uh, you, that's why you have multiple pages to keep people on there they gotta scroll down you want them to scroll down so they can read your content they're also gonna see ads for example this particular article gets 2.09 pages per session 
uh, people like it. It has a bounce rate of 28%, which means um, 70, um, what is that? 72% of everyone is actually clicking over to the second page, which is awesome. Those are good numbers. If you can get your bounce rate down to 28%, that's, that's awesome. The average session duration on that one is about one minute and 10 seconds. That's pretty decent too when the average person sticks on a website for you know less than six seconds these days. So you want it that the longer, the more pages that you can get without ticking people off, you'll have multiple, uh, you know, pages per session. So I know guys that write articles where if they can't get people to click through 10, 15 pages, then they don't consider those good articles. Um, I'll talk about that here in just, just a moment, but that's the whole thing is you want to keep your balance rate and that's why you see the multiple pages. Is every post we ever do in multiple pages? No. Um, we do a lot of single page posts, but when we go pay for advertising for a post, well, usually sometimes we'll start it out as a one page post. And then if that one starts to take off, then we'll split it into multiple pages because we want to take advantage of all of our spending that we're doing. Does that make sense? Okay, so here's the thing with multiple page posts. You've got to find the balance without ticking people off. I mean, think about yourself. Have you been caught up in those multiple page uh, things and did you get ticked? Were you upset? Yeah, you probably were. Now. If you do it right, you can do it right without ticking people off and your content can do really well. So that's kind of the, the balance that you've got to find and I'll show you how to do that. So how you do it is this. You tell them enough to keep them engaged but they still want more. You tell them enough to keep them satisfied but keep their curiosity peaked that they want to see more but not get them mad. The problem is when people tick people off because they don't give them what they want and they force them to click to the next next page. Give people the option. They can leave anytime they want. But it's that little bit of curiosity that's in there that gets them to the next page. That's what works now. Uh, let's talk about clickbaiting. If you, many people have heard the term clickbaiting. Even my kids have heard what clickbaiting is. Yeah, dad, I know what clickbaiting is. Uh, that's those uh, like scammy virus websites. That, that's actually what they told me the first time I asked them, do you guys know what clickbaiting is? Oh yeah, none of my friends, we don't, we, you know, we don't go to those clickbaiting sites and that's actually probably true. Some of the younger generation don't go to these sites and that's why our demographics work the way they do. Okay, let's talk about clickbaiting. 17 facts you won't believe are true. 42 wrestlers you wouldn't believe actually existed. Why BuzzFeed doesn't do clickbaiting? You won't believe this one weird trick. <laughs> Kendall Jenner talks, you know, takes selfies. You won't believe what she said. Watch. So clickbaiting is writing a title that is to get pers someone to click on the title simply because they are just so intrigued in that title or you're like forcing them to click to it. And guess what? Clickbaiting works. And it works. When it came out, it worked really well. BuzzFeed was probably the one that really started capitalizing on this. But it's kind of had a lifespan and people have started to get sick of the entire of the really crazy titles. Now, they still work, but when I say people get sick, people on Facebook and people on social media have started to get really negative about certain clickbaiting titles and they will actually report those posts as being negative. They'll mark uh, negatives against you and then you can eventually um, have a lot of issues on Facebook and social media. You're still gonna see these, they're not gonna go away. Uh, clickbaiting works and we use it and let me tell you why how we do it now um, if again if you tick people off you'll end up with a you'll won't end up with a real business so if your people <laughs> click to your sites and all they see is ads they're just gonna be so mad at you and you're not gonna have a real business sometimes those little tricks have worked in the past but for long-term businesses they don't work now so do we still use clickbaiting? Yes, but you have to provide value. And let's talk about it. Give people what they are looking for. If you tell them something's gonna happen, let them see it and let them see it fast. No more crazy titles. That's the thing. It's not like 17 photos of weird castles in Bavaria number seven blew my socks off and then they can never get to number seven um, or just really crazy clickbaiting titles. 
um, you're gonna find that over time theirs just aren't gonna work as well but don't don't mislead them and so there's there's a whole industry of people in the clickbaiting world that, that just that's their goal is to get you to be on their site and get lost in their site but it doesn't create a long-term business um, so here's the thing you have to be smart about your headlines um, and especially now you're getting penalized if your uh, title turns out to be clickbaiting. In fact, there's certain words that they're starting to really penalize you on. They don't tell you, but they're the kind of like the common clickbaiting words. And we'll talk a lot about these in the, the mastermind area as we go along and you progress with this. But let's go look at some of the titles that we use in, in our articles that tend to be a little bit more um, smart and not so much clickbaiting, okay? Um, you're gonna notice on my site here, I don't have anything that's like the seven crazy things you could do and number seven will shock you. You know, those are the, I don't do any of this, but let me give you an example. Um, a man saves a woman trapped in a submerged car and then finds out there's one more inside. Okay, now that's clickbaiting, but it's intriguing and it tells people enough and they're like, whoa, what the heck? Um, this might be the funniest redneck commercial ever made. And they're like, really? I gotta go check this out. I like redneck commercials. I gotta go check this out. Um, a dog copies every move this dancer makes and it's beautiful. People go, oh really? Wow. I gotta check this out. Strawberry cream truffles, simple to make and only three ingredients. So people look at that and they go, hmm. Simple to make, only three ingredients. What are the ingredients? See, I'm not saying like simple ingredients, you won't believe what number two is. I mean, those titles work, but that's not how I've decided to build my business. His father has Alzheimer's, but when they sing together, he gets him back. Well, what is it? What, he gets him back, I gotta see this, I gotta sing it. So you see how that, so here's one. Robbers grab woman's baby and her pit bull dogs spring into action. Well, what happened? I want to know what happens. These um, babies discovering things for the first time is hilarious. Okay. Well, what's hilarious about it? I got to check it out. Uh, coconut lemon melt away, the no guilt version that will knock your socks off. Why is it going to knock my socks off? I've got to check it out. This husky dog sings along with the iPad and it's so cute. Uh, wait. Now, this one's a little bit more clickbaity. Wait till you see what this dolphin stole from a woman at SeaWorld. And so this one is a little bit more on the, on the hey, I gotta click it thing, but I, I give them what they want. I tell them, I intrigue them, and a lot of people really like to this one. And it's just a one page one. You guys wanna curious to see what you grab? Yep, you grab someone's iPad. <laughs> and so, you know, this particular page right here, I, I kinda consider this more of a filler article. Not, not a lot of people went and shared this one. But it was, I don't know if this one could have been a multi page post or not. Sometimes these are a little quick ones. It's a little tougher to make um, a multi page post. But um, it was good. It was a good piece of content and it was a good title. So those are, oh, oh, here's one that I like. Um, this one's good. Boy gives the girl the game ball to impress her, but something just isn't right. So you see what the intrigue is on that? You gotta see this one. This is uh, pretty hilarious. That outside Watch this. Pitch, especially when it gets this two boy. Strikes. Yeah, the breaking ball. Is catches really a ball. Tonight. You guys see especially it? Especially from the right hand. Catches a ball. As he learns and he gives to, it to recognize the girl. that pitch a little but bit. But did earlier. he give that see ball that to the girl? See that kid there in the pink glasses. Watch closely. Earlier in the game, Luis Rivera throws him a and baseball. Watch closely. Now watch what he does. He Listen catches that kid. baseball and then turns to the group and of young ladies behind him and said, "Hey, ladies, would you like a ball?" <laughs> anyway, it's kind of funny. So this was a this is this one um, this was a pretty viral video out there. Um, but I liked the title of this one. Boy gives the girl the game ball to impress her, but something just isn't right. You'll know when your titles are right when they start getting shared a lot. Um, so this is another one. Um, this mom was pronounced dead. Forty five minutes later, doctors heard something. So this is pretty clickbaiting. This might be like more like on the edge. Well, what did they hear? Um, you know, so you can play around with these different titles. All right, let's go over and look at little things. And they have 
just they're like pet categories. Uh, pregnant Chihuahua rescued from hoarders pose for gorgeous maternity photos. Teen reels in a 650 pound pig nose fish who's been a town legend for 40 years. Whoa, town legend? Whoa. Uh, senior dog adopts an orphan baby raccoon. He can't stop smiling about it. By the time, by the time owner spot beehive, his puppy is stung 400 times. So like, we're telling them. They're telling them what's in here. Adorable bird thinks he's a city destroying monster from a movie. Um, let's see. Uh, little boy, uh, little boy refuses to leave the side of three trapped baby turtles. Why? Well, you know, um, this emaciated puppy is so hungry she eats plastic. Then her heroes arrive. Well, that's a little bit of clickbaiting. Mom captures precious last moments with her dying girl before putting her down. And and obviously they're talking about a puppy there. So, or a dog. Um, vicious. A uh, very serious orangutan starts the world's slowest game of catch with a zoo visitor. Do you guys kind of get the ideas? They are a little bit more conservative, but really smart about their titles. And that, in my opinion, and from my experience, is what's going to build you a longer term business. So you got to provide uh, value. Did we cover that enough? All right. Here's the thing. Facebook especially will, will start really penalizing you for crazy clickbaiting titles. Um, those days are gone. Those days of doing crazy clickbait titles are gone. Um, people will still do them on their sites on other articles than that. But um, advertising those and putting them all over Facebook, you're actually going to get penalized. People are really going to do a lot of negative comment. The best viral content does not need crazy clickbait titles and we've proven that over and again uh, a lot of our titles that have been some of the best have not been crazy clickbait titles so here's the question that you have to ask yourself um, what kind of content will build you a long-term business that you can sell uh, you know you can make money on you know quick and low quality sites right but will it last is it going to be here two three four years from now and at the end of the day, our advertiser is going to want to put their ads on your website. Is the content going to match or is it going to uh, bring them a lot of revenue, which will in turn bring you a lot of revenue? So those are the different types of viral content styles. As things grow and develop, we'll be introducing more. And as we start testing and tweaking and other members in our mastermind start testing and tweaking, we'll talk about more viral content styles. So um, yeah, that's the end of this training. Looking forward to seeing the different viral content styles that you post about. Uh, see you on the next video.